What is up folks? Welcome back to another video. As you can see, we're standing in front of an Academy Sports and Outdoors to film another rendition of creating the most expensive fishing combo. Now we did this video a few weeks ago. We were actually in Texas at a local Shields, which is one of the world's largest fishing stores I've ever seen. And we built the most expensive combo that I have ever built. That combo was almost a thousand dollars, but that was a bait casting combo. And in that video, we set a 10,000 like goal. And if we hit that goal, we would go to a different store and create the most expensive spinning combo possible. And since a ton of you guys use spinning gear, you guys crushed the goal and now we're gonna do it. What's the most expensive spinning combo you've ever owned, Andrew? Probably like 100 bucks. I think the most expensive spinning combo I've ever had may have been like 300, 350, but either way, those numbers are gonna be shattered today. Once we have our combo assembled, we're gonna head out to a couple local creeks, try to hook up with some creek monsters. There are tons of multi-species opportunities today, and it's always a good day when you get to spend a little bit of money. Make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button if you like these videos. Also, make sure you're subscribing because I end up giving away a lot of this stuff that I buy, and you always have to be subscribed to be entered into these giveaways. See you inside. Is this a thing? Dude, they, are they teasing a Whataburger? Whataburger and Academy partnership. I dig it. Imagine the possibilities. Look at this, man. They've got like actual themed gear. Oh, dude, I love that. I mean, this might have to be like the adventure hat for today. It matches the shirt pretty good. Does it really? Yeah. It just needs, a, it doesn't have a, a, a strappy mm, thing. Now. That's the only complaint. Dude, H2OX, right? And we talked about this the last time we were in Academy. And they make bait casting reels whoa dude. when did this happen stepping the game up now how we like to do these combo challenges is we normally try to find the rod first right and we're looking for the most expensive we're looking for the highest end of the gear spectrum we want the premium gear and since this is a spinning gear competition it's going to cut down our options a little bit so we got abu garcia right here the first section that i'm seeing i'm only seeing one spinning rod and it's only fifty dollars. Oh no, they've got they've got a couple. They've got a vendetta right here for eighty bucks. You know, I used to be a big Abu Garcia rod guy. Broke a lot of them, but I've broken a lot of rods in my day, <laughs> so I'm fact. not not throwing any stones. So far, the Guggen spinning rods are the most expensive that I'm seeing. These are the greens right here. Oh, we got some mislabeling going on uh -oh. here. Uh-oh. See, we got, this is how much green rod actually costs, $99. But this one's labeled as a gold casting rod. That might be a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a sure. $50 mistake right there. They actually don't have any of the Guggen gold spinning rods, so let's move on. Falcon? Never Falcon? heard of that. Falcon's got a $99 rod right here. A little seven foot medium heavy. There's another Falcon rod for 109. I think now we're starting to get into that higher end stuff. Once again, never really heard of Falcon, but man, that feels really good in Does the old it? hand. It just feels super sensitive, you know? And for a spinning rod, I want some sensitivity. I also want a little bit of backbone, but I want to feel everything. Ooh, the Dobbin section. This is going to be, I think this is going to be one of the places where we find some high-end gear. Little 129 Dobbins Fury, seven foot, medium heavy, little spinner right there. It says it's for jigs, Texas rigs, Senkos, and shaky heads. Well, a jig? Not bad. On a spinning rod? Must have a little bit more backbone than you think. I know Dobbins is good stuff. I mean, I've heard tons about it. I've used them before. That's definitely a contender right there. Moving on to Ducket. Let's see what they've got to offer. They actually have a bunch of different spinning rods, but they're all kind of the same price point. I wonder how much the green ghost is. That's only 89. Here we go. Here's a little $129 Ducket right here. Oh, this is the Zeus. Ooh, special. That's a little seven foot power medium. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I don't wanna buy this rod just because of the font of that information yeah. right there. That looks like it was drawn by a kid I and like it. it just doesn't look professional enough. I dig it, you're wrong. I mean, I like the rod itself. I love, I love the white. I've always been a fan of white fishing rods. It was a very uncool thing five years ago to have a white fishing rod. Now it's like, now any color is just awesome. I know for a fact Dial was not gonna have anything that's gonna contend with Duckett or Dobbins as far as price point. Probably the same thing for Shimano. They might make some really expensive stuff, but they're probably not gonna have it here. I'm just seeing a lot of $100, $100, $100 stuff. Same goes for Ugly Stick, same goes for H2OX. But we've been surprised before. Sometimes they'll hide the super high-end rods just over here. Like there's just a one single 
$400 rod sitting over here. There's 125, a lose inshore rod. Mm, come on now, there's gotta be a random, really nice rod over here. Now we've still got an entire section over here. I mean, we've got Mock, Abu Garcia, Pen, American Hero, which is a lose brand, Ugly Stick, Zebco. I don't think Zebco is gonna end up being the most expensive, just a guess. But the problem is most of these are just pre-made combos and none of them are going to fall under that most expensive category. But that would be an awesome place to start if you're a beginner fisherman. Andrew, I found it, I think. Did you? I think I found it. It was actually hiding. I missed it when I first did my walkthrough. I think the most expensive spinning rod in this store is a ducket. $149.99, so almost $150. Now this is the Jacob Wheeler series. Oh. So Jacob Wheeler, if you're watching this, you have the most expensive rod in Academy, so that's an accomplishment, my friend. This one in particular is a seven foot two medium heavy, so that's perfect. I mean, where we're gonna be going to some creeks with largemouth bass, we've got gar, there's giant carp, there's bowfin, there's smaller fish, bluegill, other types of brim, crappie. There could be anything, and this rod could catch literally any of those fish. Look at Wheeler right there. Look what? at him. Look at him. He's probably setting the hook on a 12 right there in a tournament. Dude's Elite. just killing it right now. Now our real search is gonna be a lot shorter, a lot simpler because this little wall right here is covered in different reels. But once again, these are kind of some of your lower end, not lower end, but just, you know, more inexpensive stuff. Great for beginners. Pin. Awesome brand. They have some Shimano's up here. They do have a $99 Shimano right there. You got your Daiwa's, got your Pflugers, even a little mock smash in there. But of course we are looking to build the most expensive, the highest end combo. That means we're gonna find ourselves in front of a glass case. Dude, you've gotta be kidding me, Andrew. That's it, man. These are the most expensive. There's only three in here and that one's like a deep sea rod. Oh my gosh, no, this is, this is not right. These can't be the only two spinning rails in this store that are worth a damn. This cannot be right. I don't think this is right. We gotta get somebody over here. Did y'all press uh, the button? Yes, ma'am. I actually had a question. I was just uh, curious if there was any more fishing reels that uh, were normally out here back there. This might turn into like a multi-store situation. If we can't find the right reel here, we're gonna have to go somewhere else. Yeah, all bait casters, you think? Gotta be honest, Andrew, I'm a little disappointed. We found a good rod, but we don't have a reel to pair it with, so I think we're gonna have to hop over to Dick's Sporting Goods. It's right across the street, luckily, and see if we can find something that's a little bit more fitting for this challenge. Just made it into Dick's Sporting Goods, and already I've seen like three different reels that were more expensive than the most expensive reel at Academy. We got options in here, folks. I'm seeing a pen for 189 right there. It's a couple pens. There's a couple Daiwas that are decently priced. There's a Quantum. Did you know Quantum made a reel for $190? No, I did not. I always thought Quantum was like kind of middle of the road. I didn't think they were like that. But way back there in the corner, got that little Shimano Vanford. Two. 59. That's an expensive That's reel right there. That is steep. That's a 4,000, a little bit bigger than creek fishing would call for, but we can't be picky at this point. We gotta, we just gotta get this combo assembled. The one. Oh yeah. Just look at that thing. That's a beautiful reel, man. It is. Look at that. Looks aren't everything when it comes to fishing gear, but it's nice when it actually looks good too. But let's go ahead and buy this thing, get out to the creek, see what this combo looks like put together, and most importantly, see how it performs. There you have it, folks. That's what a more than $400 spinning combo looks like. Gotta be honest with you, it's an absolute beauty. That rod, the blue, really shines in the sunshine. Like it, it the store lights don't really do it justice. It's a good looking rod. And of course, we know the reel is good looking. Although, I have to say, looks like the bail right here is just, is bent. Like I can't, like I think I just fixed it right there. But it was, it was bent when I got it, which was kind of a bummer. It's fine now, it seems to be working just fine. Went ahead and spooled this thing up with 30 pound braid and then did a little bit of a, a leader, a little mono leader right there, if you guys can see that. Like a 15 pound mono leader, way more than you need for a creek, but I believe in being over prepared. 
I also have a multitude of creek fishing baits here that I just kind of grabbed from either the house or Dick Sporting Goods. Got some micro crankers because it's a creek, why not? I swear I got more than one rooster tail, but I'm only seeing one. So but that's an that's an all-time classic creek bait. Some beetle spins, which is probably what's gonna get tied on first if I had to guess. Got the whole Guggen crappy line here, different size jig heads, different crappy lures. And obviously this could catch more than just crappy. Then I got some regular straight up Guggen hooks with some lunker logs if we get into some really good bass or who knows. But I think just to get a sense of how this thing casts and just if there's any fish active in this creek, I think we should tie up a beetle spin first. I think I'm gonna go with chartreuse. <laughs> Little mini chartreuse spinner bait. Thing actually looks super sick. Ooh. This thing's got a stiff backbone, but the, the tip is like super sensitive. It's a lot more fast than I would have expected. I also cannot believe how crowded this creek is right now. There's a gentleman right there fishing. A gentleman just pulled up right there who is also fishing. So I guess we'll just fish right here. It's giving me some hope though that there's so many people fishing. There's got to be fish around. It's getting me really hyped up for creek season too. Creek fishing season is upon us. I mean, it's starting to get warm here in the south. And once it gets super hot, the ponds just kind of shut down. The lakes get a little bit tougher, but the creeks, the creeks can thrive. Let's see how this combo does really casting this light lure. Oh man, like butter. Love the action that this thing's getting in the water. Beetle spin is the goat. Oh yeah. That's decent little casting distance. I mean, that's a that's an eighth ounce spinner doodle right there. The good news is if we have no luck here, we have a couple other creeks that we want to go check out. And we got plenty of lures to get this done. There's gonna be some creek fish caught today. I can almost guarantee it. Well, I can guarantee it because I'm not gonna quit until it happens. This thing is pretty dang smooth, if I'm being honest. Oh my gosh, somebody else is pulling up the fish. Yeah, dude, we may have to we may have to take this mission on somewhere else because we're we are about to be surrounded by anglers. I know what you guys are thinking. How in the world is this little ball right here gonna help me catch more fish? I'm glad you asked, because I'm gonna show you. This right here, folks, this is the old deeper unit right here, smart sonar. And specifically, this is the chirp unit right here. Now, I haven't fished this creek in literally maybe a year or longer, so I have no idea the water temperature, water depth, structure, contour, or any of those things. And with this little magical bobber right here, we're gonna be able to find out all of those things. Just gonna flip her out right there. I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy smartphone now that we all have. I'm gonna open my Fish Deeper app. And looky there, folks, actual depth reading, actual water temperature reading, the ability to scan and see the bottom and see structure that may or may not be out there. I wanna cast this thing out there deep so I can really see what's going on. Oh, wow, it's actually shallower out there in the middle than it is right in front of me. That's interesting. It's only like two feet deep out in the middle of this creek. I can tell you guys, as a bank fisherman, it is incredibly beneficial for me to know things like the water depth from the bank. Things that I'm just not gonna know at a place that I haven't been to before. There we go. Now we're finding some deeper water. That's six feet deep over there. And I bet you there's some fish held up over there. It's got a map. Make sure you don't forget where you were catching fish. You can add waypoints. There are different types of scanning modes. There's access to premium depth maps. And best of all, it's available on your phone, on your smartphone, in your pocket. This thing really does it all. Big shout out to Deeper for sponsoring today's video. And they have sponsored many videos in the past. Visit their website, guys. There'll be a link right at the top of the description. Go check it out. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. These things are magical. They do so much for the bank fishermen. There's also a kayak mount or a boat mount. So you can use it really no matter what type of fishing you're doing. And if you're smarter than me, you would have the cell phone mount that goes on your rod. So you're not trying to have to hold your phone and fish with your free hand. So this is your old stomping grounds, right, Andrew? Yeah, that's where I learned how to fish, basically. Dude, I've never been here before. I've never even seen this creek. It's, it's not even far from where we just were. Well, I'm gonna walk around a little bit. It looks steep. It's like a real big drop right here. Like I wonder if there's some deep water right here. I'm starting with the beetle spin because I'm really not too picky about what we catch. 
right out of the gate and we're just trying to catch something but i want to eventually switch to start targeting some bigger fish as the day goes on some little bait fish doesn't seem like a big deal to a lot of people but i love seeing bait fish when i show up at a new spot wanting to catch fish i want to see bait fish almost immediately just to help give myself a little bit of confidence I gravitated towards that side because it was shaded, but maybe because it was kind of, it's kind of been chilly the last few days. Maybe this sunny water warmed up a little bit quicker this morning. Oh, what was that? Maybe they're hanging out over here. Ooh, oh, oh, I'm on. Let's go, first fish of the day. Look at that beautiful fish. Wow, beautiful green sunfish. Let me get that, look at that. Got a mouthful of beetle spin. Smoked it. That's such a good creek lure. You just said how you have a lot of good luck. Yeah. Over there on that side. Look Smart. at that guy right there. Beautiful. Absolute beauty of a fish. Wow. Man, fish number one, species number one. All I saw was that, that orange color when he was coming out of the water. Same. So beautiful. Not a big fish, but this is what creek fish is all about right here. Heck yeah. Let me take them on down to the creek. Let me give them the dignity of an actual release. There he goes. Boom, baby. Beetle spin claims another victim. One of my favorite things about creek fishing is that right there. I had no idea what to expect on that first bite. It could have been, I could name 10 fish that it could have been. You just never know. Okay. We broke the skunk, and that's always an important moment in a man's life. The confidence starts to build from there. This rod and reel setup, absolutely perfect for this style of fishing that we're doing right now. We're throwing some kind of lighter lures right this second. It's got a lot of sensitivity because of that soft tip, but it's got the backbone to set that hook, drive it on through, and secure the fish. The, literally the only complaint is the reel, this part right here was just bent in a weird way and i've kind of tinkered with it and kind of fixed it but it's still not quite right oh that was another bite i think no that was a leaf i think i'm going to change up lure selection and i think what i'd like to do maybe try a little something like this hmm maybe one of those little doodads right there this little pink and green combo i think is going to be very nice for this water clarity and that right there folks is a juicy rig dude this is starting to get old yeah like he's just circling us hey yeah uh, we got some fishermen down here roger that go ahead and fly around him 10 times just to make sure oh this has got poison oak written all over it andrew yeah i'm sure you'll find it for everybody Oh, dude, there's a little creek curve right here. Oh, that's sick. Look, there's, this, there's like a sandbar. Well, it's just a dried up creek basically, but it juts out into the real creek. Dude, I guarantee you there's fish around the edge of this. This reel is super fast. What gear ratio is this bad boy? Well, that was predictable. Don't look at it. Oh, I broke my leader off. No. Gotta retie. Hold on. I guess we're gonna go back to the old beetle spin, but this time hit him with the old black. The water's pretty dirty back here, and if it's shady, that'll help us a little bit, I think. Now we gotta cross this creek and see what's on the other side. I'm hoping this island right here doesn't just sink to our ankles. What you get first? Oh! Almost! Oh, oh yeah, they got a little wet. That's okay, it was bound to happen. Oh, there we go, fill them up, fill them up. Oh, that water is so cold in these helicopters, stop it. Looking for snakes. Damn it, there's always one random thorn bush that's like, oh, you wanna cross me? Ha ha, you have to go through me. Oh, there he is. Oh, 
That's a freaking snake, my guy. Couldn't you tell by the inflection of my voice? Yeah, he's right there. Pretty sure it's a water moccasin. Look, there he goes. See? That's a venomous, that's a venomous snake. He was right there and I almost stepped on him. There's always people in the comment section like, dude, you're always so worried about a snake, ha ha ha. It's like, dude, because that happens to me so often. That was so close, man. Like, like my next step was there. He was right there. So like my next step, I'm in striking range. That scared me, dude. He, he was just trying to get to the water, but yeah. he almost went like at me because I was in between him and this little slide right here. Jesus, man. <laughs> In other news, this part of the creek is really cool, but I am just all flustered now. I want to leave. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, no, I want to go home. Let's talk about this combo just for a minute and just how it's performing at kind of like the halfway point in this video. I'm going to say I like the rod a lot. I love the combination of sensitivity and backbone. I know I've said it earlier, but that's just so important to me, especially on a spinning combo. You guys can see the area that we're fishing right here. A lot of overhanging trees, really tight casting windows. And with this, this rod with all the sensitivity, I can just kind of flip everything in there, flip these light lures around, complete control, but I can still lay the hammer on a fish if I need to. The reel is nice, but like most really expensive reels, I'm not sure if the price is justified, but I'm not gonna make that determination yet. Have you ever traveled up the creek this way? No, I have not. We'll have to add that to the list of things that we should do this summer. Boy, this is... Oh! God. It's slick and deep. It's very slick and very deep. That looked really deep. Yeah, it just kept going. You were just standing here and all of a sudden you almost disappeared into a hole. With the camera too, I like your dedication. You threw the camera up on the bank. Let's try the next creek. Maybe there will be less snakes and hidden holes. Man, this place, this place has got a lot of potential. It's shallow, but you got multiple points with current coming through. So it's almost like a current break right here, coming around this corner, all the shade right here, down tree. Oh my God. Now, if there's gonna be a good sized bass, he's gonna be somewhere around here, I'm guessing. All this current just pulling bait around. Oh, somebody just pulled over right there. I wonder if he's going to fish too. Dude, people been creek fishing today, brother. No kidding. It's a Monday at like one o'clock in the afternoon and people are out. The creek fishermen are rolling deep today and I like that. Looks like we cannot. Ooh, under the tree? Come on. Reward me. Oh, I just had a fish right there in that hole dude that hole right in front of us i don't know what it was dang something just came out of that the depth right there and attacked it out of the shadows dang man i just want to know what it was god this looks good right here all this slack water under a tree Kind of running out of bank access here. I'm really hoping if we keep walking. Oh, look at this little area right there. It's like a little holding pool. That's exactly what I was about to say. I'm looking for some slack water in like a holding area. Oh, what was that? Something just jumped out of that grass, Andrew, and went into the water. Snake. I don't know. <laughs> you just like look around. Oh, you say snake? We're actually picking up today's little adventure a 24 hours later. Your boy had to have some dental work done. So currently this entire portion of my face and mouth is completely numb. And, but does my mouth look weird? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> now this might be one of my favorite creeks to fish, like of all time, but it's a tad bit sketchy getting down there to it. See, these are some real exciting adventure rocks because at any moment, one of them could just be loose. She's looking a little low. That's okay. Went ahead and switched up to the old lunker log. Now, I forgot hooks somehow or lost them, the ones I had yesterday. So I had to rig up a little, almost like a Ned rig with a Guggenbait Crappy Series jig head. But it's honestly fine. 
I just bit the lunker log in half, basically. Oh my God, did I just have a fish? There is no way, that's right. I just picked up and there was kind of something chewing on it. Thing is though, the spawn's got to be way messed up in creeks because the water temps are so much lower in creeks than they are in lakes and ponds. So I bet you these fish haven't even like come close to spawning yet. The water's probably still too cold. Oh no. No snags. Oh, it's moving. Oh man, I just lost my rig already. That's good news. Luckily, I brought a couple spares. And I kept my leader. Let's go. I know how to get a heated debate going on in the comment section. If you guys only had one lure to throw in this creek right now, you got beetle spin, you got rooster tail. Which one? This is gonna be a lot closer than I think you might think. I know just as many people who swear by the rooster tail, but also swear by the beetle spin for just multi-species anytime, anywhere. I'd already used the beetle spin, so I guess I'll use the rooster tail next. Just not a fan of the old rooster tails. I never have been. I'm just, I know they work. I'm not saying that they don't work. I don't know, the action's just weird to me for some reason. But hey, if it catches fish, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna try to ease up to this point. I think there's some fish in this shade. Don't wanna spook them. See, now I look at that thing coming through the water and I'm just like, what in the world is that supposed to even be? You a big rooster tail guy? Mm -hmm. I've caught plenty of fish on them, but they're definitely not my favorite. Well, see, I get that part, and that's what everybody always says. Every path looks like a possible snake habitat. Well, thankfully, it's just a pleasure using this combo because the bite itself has been pretty rough. I'm not sure if it's just because it's post-spawn and things get a little tricky, or maybe it's actually possible it's a little early for the creek bite to be good. That might be it for old rooster tail. Don't look at it, kids. Well, I think this is a good opportunity to tie that beetle spin on and visit another creek. Yet another creek, Andrew. Fourth one? Wait, no, this would be the fifth one. Dude. Yeah, it's too many to count. Saw it. New creek, new lure. This is the big beetle spin. This is the quarter ounce. Yeah, dude, you're right. People with trash are just out of freaking control, man. Like, what is this? It's like, like a whole unit, like dresser or something. It's also covered in tadpoles, which are just thriving. Oh man, the creek is running right here, boy. <laughs> dude, I literally, I was looking down, I saw somebody else's slide mark, and I was like, be careful you don't slide right. And then before I could even get the sentence like out in my head, I was down. <laughs> Frick. Oh, I kind of caught myself, so I didn't really I didn't really hit that hard, but now my hands are just squigged. Gotta be something by all these pylons in the current. Got rock, you got grass. There has got to be predatory fish right here. And that was almost the best cast in the history of the world. I tell you what, these this leader knot that I tied today now. Oh, I had to say something. I was about to say, dude. Oh, I tore the beetle spin in half. I don't even think I've ever seen that happen before. I've never broken one in half like that. Never seen that, dude. I am going through the lures that I brought. We don't have that many options left. All right, that's not a bad looking rig. We've got some diversity going on for sure. We have shown the fish just about every look that I know to show in a creek fishing situation. Ooh, no, please come out. That seemed like it broke off. That's not what you want to see. Oh, Bray, Bray, you're a disgusting animal. You know that? You are just the worst kind of line. Oh, I may have gotten it out. Oh, that's so lucky, it's crazy. Oh, did you see that? I don't know what that was, but it was a massive fish. And you literally hit him. Oh my goodness, that's what we're looking for. We know they're in these creeks. 
he was tucked way back there in the shade. That's a real predictable spot. I mean, you got to figure there's a bunch of those fish back there. Oh my goodness. Let's, that, that woke me up. Try to get it back in there again. Maybe he'll come back for it. Fun fact, we were just driving down this highway and there was an actual power line about four feet off of the ground that I just hit. I'm not sure if it was a power line, but it was some type of a wire stringing across the highway that would indicate that it probably shouldn't be hit. Holy moly, me and Andrew just had a freaking mini heart attack. Because I saw it at the last second. Found this little creek on Google Earth. There's a couple pictures on fish brain of people holding fish out of it, so. At this point, it's the most promising lead we've had. All right, well, the creek mission became almost impossible. I don't think it's quite creek season yet, if you know what I mean. It's not quite hot enough. We got to get this most expensive spinning combo hooked up with something else other than a brim. You know what I'm saying? Holy moly, look at the beds. Wow. I haven't really fished too many frogs on spinning gear before. I better tighten that drag down a little bit. Now this is a creek. This right here, as it goes down there, this is where the spring comes into this pond. So true spring fed creek, pretty clear water for being a little trash pond. We cut the sails up, baby. We're moving. Oh, there's a bass right there. I'm about to float over. That's dope. <laughs> and there it goes. And there's a giant turtle right there. Oh, that's a fish. Come here. Oh, he's still there. He's still here. God, he is running like crazy. Oh, he came off. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> My drag was not set. It was way too loose. What in the heck? I put the frog down, you know, the sun got up and the wind started blowing a little bit. So I just threw on like a very simple light, small Texas rig with a four inch lunker log with a little purple flake in there. Made a cast over here on this brush line and man, it got demolished. And the fish was just running out. I have no idea what that was or how big it was because my drag was so dang loose. Oh, got another one. Got that one. Oh, come here, buddy. Woohoo! Ah! He's a feisty one. Come here, buddy. Wow, we drove that up through on that one. Boom! What a monster! Let me hold him a little closer to the camera. What a monster. He's actually a little tank though, for real. <laughs> he's got some head and shoulders on him. Well, he's about the size of the brim we caught out of the creek. I was hoping to get a little bit more of a stress test for this combo, but handled that one pretty well. Lunker log claims another victim. I love these, the four inchers. A little bit smaller profile for a smaller body of water like this. This really works well. Plus you throw in a little purple flake. I'm really into some green pumpkin purple these days. This hook is way too big for this rig, but we're getting by. Oh boy. I am so relieved that there are still fish in this little pond. I'm really enjoying putting this combo in this particular situation. Well, both, all these situations, the creek and a kayak, because your combo becomes very important when you're having to make pinpoint casts, you're having to cast underneath trees and, you know, casting gear would be good too, but the spinning gear really excels in those situations and throwing lighter lures far and easily against the wind without birds nesting. Those are all really important things to an angler, at least to me. And this combo is performing beautifully. See how it's hitting right there? Like that is so, that's so irritating. Like I have to squeeze it and adjust it and kind of like bend it back to the shape that it needs to be. And it's still hitting. That is just, that's wonky. That's not what you want to see when you're paying 250 for a reel. I don't know if it's a, if it's dicks, 
if it's if it came like that from the manufacturing plant and if, or if it just got damaged along the way and nobody noticed it that's been the only complaint from the whole combo everything else has been great Dang it. I might be able to back off. He might come back. I see him. Hey, that was a decent bass right there. Just hanging out right there on the edge. Believe it or not, I've caught fish right in front of that pipe before. Right here in this little pool. Brim will hang out in here. Bass will hang out. And bass will spawn right here too. Bass will spawn literally anywhere. It's quite amazing. There we go. Oh my god. Got hit as soon as I got in there. Oh, cut my freaking worm in half. What was that? At least the wind's pushing me back. That's actually perfect. So I can reset. That seemed like a, a toothy critter right there. That might have been a bowfin or a gar or something else, maybe. Tell you what, these creeks, you just never know what you're gonna get. hit again oh i got you that time buddy what is this it's a little bass i can't believe it you mean to tell me that this is what tore my lunker log in half i don't even know if i believe that it's even smaller than the last one i gotta get real close to the camera to make that thing look big that's a little aquarium bass right there big old tail fin on him though he's got some decent genetics i appreciate you buddy tiny little splash <laughs> well we got to the bottom of that mystery well i think we've reached the end of the line Whew. all right folks man this was one heck of a video to make we visited numerous creeks we went all over the map putting this combo to the test ended up at this pond with a kayak i think i have made literally hundreds of casts with this combo over the course of the last two days and I mean, look, it's a nice combo. We know that. We know how much it costs. It's supposed to be nice. Let me give you guys my final thoughts on it. Let's start with the rod. The rod was definitely my favorite part. I thought it was definitely worth the money. I would compare it to any moderate to high level, medium heavy spinning rod. You know, your St. Croix, your Guggen Golds, that type stuff. Very nice, I liked it. I thought it was appropriately priced for what it ended up being. Now the reel, okay? The reel is a little bit more confusing. I already said, you know, the bail was kind of bent coming out of the box and I don't know whose fault that was. I don't want to blame anybody. I'm just saying, when you pay $260 for a reel and it comes out of the package bent and unable to be used, like to where the operator has to bend it and adjust it and it still is not working right. I don't know if I can give that a thumbs up. You know what I mean? So I would say you could probably find a comparable spinning reel that's just as good as that for $100 cheaper, like the $140, $50 price point. Now that's just my opinion. I know Shimano's awesome, but I mean, look, they should've never got rid of Stratic. That's, that's Shimano's first problem, but I digress. Either way, it was an awesome spinning combo. You guys hit that 10,000 like goal in the Baitcaster video, so we ran it back. Built a pretty nice little spinning combo. And if you guys could guess, I'm definitely gonna be giving away that reel even though it's kind of fricked up, but I'm sure somebody out there could fix it super easy. So I'll announce that in a video very soon. Make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe because if you do those two things, you're always gonna be entered into any giveaway that I do. Love to hear y'all's opinion on any of this equipment if you have any experience with it or if you think you know of an item that's comparable that you don't have to spend as much money on, definitely get in that comment section. Let me know. I'm very interested to hear from you guys. It was a fun day. We caught some multi-species fish. Nothing big, but hey, it be like that sometimes. More videos coming, folks. Hopefully you stay tuned. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for the continued love and support on the channel. It means the world to me. I'm out. See you guys next time. Peace.